Okay, so I think we're going to go a different direction rather than Big Ebb's engine. And this is what we're going to go with. <laughs> Alright, so we have here our old radiator um, that came out of the BT. We're going to repurpose this one for the Monaro. So what I've done so far, ignore the bang and crack, so it's fine. Um, I welded on these little um, sliding slots, so the condenser, two slides in a VY, will slide in in the front of the radiator, like so. Um, and then obviously that will keep it nice and tight against the radio so the air gets pulled through. So what we're gonna do now is replace this old acrylic fan shroud that I made a while ago and with some lovely new metal that will fold up, brace out and uh, put that on there and I reckon that little schmick into this big blue uh, smurf that's sitting in the engine bay. So you might be asking why I'm doing this. Uh, there's a couple of reasons. One, the acrylic ain't strong, so it's already started to crack. Um, and we can't get a good divider down the middle. Now the reason why we want a divider is we want to make sure when one air fan's pulling, it's pulling through this area, and it's not sucking the air back through the other fan to come out this way. So that's one of the reasons. And the other reason is, this is a spell fan which is designed to pull. Um, we had this on the uh, in the cooler on the on the old one, the front mount board there. Um, so it's lighter and does more, does a better job than the push version running in reverse from uh, Super Cheap. So we're gonna get rid of this one, put this one on here for our small one, and um, the idea is with a metal version, it ain't gonna bend, it ain't gonna warp, um, and it'll do a better job than this smurf job. In the bin. done she's just gonna sit perfectly like so gotta go get some rubber from some Clark from Clark rubber so we can fully seal it but that's the gist of it it's all done uh, I'm painted it black because it looked crap after welding but there we go, all welded in. There, there, and there. And we just gotta finish doing the wiring, like so. But yeah, radio's all done. We'll go fit that up and um, see how it looks. Um, and it doesn't, and it stops the air from basically looping back through the system and bypassing the radiator. Well, that's how she looks sitting in the engine bay, nice and schmick. Um, the AC condenser is very tight. I don't know if I'm going to be able to run it. I have to look at a different option most likely, um, which is okay because, yeah, we've got a, a big package going in the front, which just rocked up in the post. But you'll see that in a future episode of Tin Shed TV. What are we doing today, Sean? Um, some engine stuff. Yeah, we're just gonna uh, 
So while the engine's out and before we shove it in, we're just going to find top dead center using the old bolt in the engine method because these harmonic balances actually don't have any riding or anything like that for a trigger point. So we're gonna make our own. So when we first start it up, we can find tree point. I'm gonna say the top is at the top somewhere. And using the bolt in the engine, don't put bolts in your engine, people. Um, so first things first, find yourself an old spark plug. Um, sometimes you find the, the broken one. Oops. And then, we basically, what we need to do, we need to cut the ring off around there. That all pops off. And then we're just gonna smack out the inside and tap it out for a bolt to go down. Probably an M10. So, why do we need to find TDC on your uh, engine? So, tr we need to find true top dead center because the Haltech um, needs a reference point. Now, if I basically tell you why, so the, the standard computer picks up two trigger points, um, times three, and times 18. Now, the Haltech doesn't have the ability to take two, so it's, we're gonna be using the times 18. But, as you can see, they're all equal. This is different. So the standard computer picks up the home on what, that and then matches it to that. So we need to find home on this so the Haltech can pick it up and know where the true top dead center is for cylinder one. So on the back of that overdrive balancer, you don't have those markings? No, I do. Um, except the Haltech's only going to be using the, the one of them. So it's only going to be using the times 18 marker. So, um, it is basically what it is. So we just got to basically write some stuff on the front of it, put a little piece of metal there. So when Barry goes and shoots the car and we put a timing line on it, we'll find true top dead center. Will you be employing the safety squint this evening? The prescription. Boom! That's how you get a spark plug out. That's what the inside looks like. Now, drill through, tap it. Mystery. Oh, not. So, what are we doing, Ev? Is this what happens when you can't find a bolt with enough thread on it? I've been recycling bolts in this shed, so we have to buy new ones. And it's too short, so I need more thread. That's what we do, isn't it? Design on demand. We don't have a bolt, so let's make a bolt. Recycle on demand. Let me just put our little adapter in the hole. Make, make sure we're at the bottom of the uh, cycle at the moment. You can see this, but I've rounded the end, so no sharp end to the top of the piston. Here is a little locking nut. So now we just turn it over so we feel it hit the nut. That, which is that one right there. there. So what we do, Sean, we mark here at the front, exactly under some type of metal that we've put there. At that point, now what we do, if we go back completely the opposite direction, ah. You think that's it? That's it there. All right. And then we mark it again. All right, so you now have so now we got two marks. Now we got two marks. So where's our first one? So there's the first one. And then where's our other one? There. That there. So that's it. far away. So there's our second mark. So what we need to do is find the 
basically halfway using a little a little baby 150 mil ruler literally bend it over the top so halfway between one and the other is 30 37 37 mil so what's half of 37 Shauno? Uh, 18.5 18.5 so we need a mark 18.5 now I probably should have used a bit thicker steel uh, or anything like that because once this moves it's kind of put the, the measurement off but um, that's all I have so we're just gonna not touch it so 18.5 which puts it about there I'm gonna go try to find a white pen so this will actually be there, or I actually might use a scriber and I'll scrape it into the... Yeah, into that's the, probably better. That's probably better. Nice little notch there. We'll use a timing light to find it later on. So that's our TDC for um, uh, cylinder one. Now, I'll quickly explain why I've done this. So what we've done is, so this is basically your, um, it's like a sine wave type thing. So when the piston comes up to the top, it basically floats at the top for a bit and then comes back down again. So that just because everything's circular and elliptical, nothing has a point, it's always around. Um, so what we've done is we marked the first one there and then we've marked the second one there on the opposite end. And then obviously measuring it, we found top dead center right on top. So you can do the same thing with a dial gauge, but we can't get to a dial gauge because we are in so we don't have access to the top of the piston. And you're basically doing the same thing. You're finding it as it comes up to zero, and then increases and you know up and there's up and back down. But basically, that's what we've done. Found the top piston that way. Science with um F. Yeah, there you go. Not as fun with um, Science with Shawno, because Science with Shawno doesn't do pictures that kind of look like a weird dick. <sighs> oh, we've kind of had a malfunction here. I forgot that knock sensors also block your coolant. Ah, oh, shite. So, uh... Just remember, when pulling knock sensors out, make sure you have uh, something underneath it to catch all your coolant. But it's also a good place to uh, drain your engine once you've taken it out. All right, well, now that I've cleaned up my mass, the um, the old knock sensor is a quarter thread, um, what NTP. So I've got this fitting here, which I've tapped out on the back end because these new Heltec knock sensors only an 8mm shank in the, on the inside. So I've got myself a, um, a bolt that I've just um, cut down and re a bit further up. And the idea is that will go through that. And a little washer underneath just to increase the size, the distance. And then that will then screw into that. But that's got to go in first. I'll put some thread sealing around it to stop the coolant coming out. And then we'll, due to the little bit of thread that is exposed, um, I'll try it without the washer first and see if it gets to the bottom. But um, most likely that's going to have to be a bit of thread locker on that, just so it all fits in there nicely and doesn't come out. And there we have it. All down there, nice and tight. Chosen to go pointing it this way a little bit because the wiring is going to come through this gap. And I didn't want to really impede it, impede that bolt head. So it's sitting on a 45 degree angle, but that's nice. So that's pretty much it. That's how you get them in there. You're probably wondering why I'm using these, because the uh, ECU is actually calibrated to read these properly. Um, not saying you couldn't, it's just a lot easier setting it all up. So the other thing is this uses the ground going back to the ECU but the other one uses the ground from the engine block so I'd rather use a product that works well. Shauno! Sure Whizzing up, cl whiz up a clutch? Whizzing up a clutch? I would have thought all the extra service trucks would give me more grip. 
Yeah. Yeah. That we'll give it a clean uh, with the wizard, and then we'll give it a clean with some brake cleaner. And throw it in. All right, it's in. I've had enough. Mm -hmm. You've had enough. It's after midnight. Mm -hmm. It was a. I know we said we snapped our fingers. Let's just take that back a bit. Yeah. I think my fingers are broken because the snap didn't work. Yeah. Clutch is in. Just got to put that clutch back in that hole. Get back in your hole. Mm. That's your home. Are you too good for your home? Answer me! We put, um, the, we put the gearbox on the box instead of doing it out from under the car like we normally do just to change things up. Yeah. Well, yeah, also now it looks alright in there. It's well. Um, uh, how's that um, oil filter gonna go? It's fine. It's fine? Yeah, it's only an issue when you need to change it. Fair enough. Alright, guys. This is another episode. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, this, this is another episode brought to, probably brought to you by Ten Shed TV. Mm. Please subscribe. We're only little, we're only a little channel. But Send we'll, some money. Hmm. Send some help. <laughs> Send some drugs. Yeah. All of the above. All of the above. All donations are welcome. My back is shot. Alright, guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, we'll catch you hopefully next week. Boom! Boom! Gearbox. Woo! Well done! Alright. How's that new Ryobi drill going for you? Um, Ryobi, please can't contact me. Uh, because your uh, 90 degree drill just doesn't do the job. And doesn't really have a good chuck. That's great.